Welcome to the second episode of Magnetic Forces VR and this is a summary of what we saw last time. The problem was that the force on a charged particle due to the magnetic field depends upon reference frames. So we saw that in our reference frame the charge was moving with the velocity V and it experiences the force QVB that makes it circulate and eventually go and hit that reference line. But in this guy's reference frame it doesn't because the charge appears to be at rest, not appears, is. The charge is at rest as far as he's concerned and therefore the force must be zero. And we saw that that can't be true, one of them has to be wrong and so what's what to do is the big question. <clears throat> the first thing to understand about Newton's laws is that velocity is frame dependent quantity. This means different inertial observers are going to find different values of velocity for different particles and that's okay. So value of V is relative. V is relative quantity and that's fine. The second thing to understand is the net force. The net force acting on a particle is not relative quantity. Every inertial observer must agree on the net force acting on a particle. So for example, if you have a particle and from your reference frame you find out that the net force on that particle is this way and that the net force is a hundred newtons, then every single inertial observer must agree that the total force acting on this particle must be 100 newtons. And so now when you look at the magnetic force acting on a particle, which is given as Q times V cross B, you can clearly see the problem with this force and why I've been always saying this is a weird force because the force must be velocity independent or frame independent yet the force depends on velocity and the velocity is frame dependent quantity that means this force is frame dependent and that can't be true or in other words in other words this cannot be the total force acting on a charged particle and that is the key to solving the problem how is that possible i mean think about it here in our example there's only one field the magnetic field and there is no other field and therefore the only force acting on our charged particle must be the magnetic force QEB and in the dude's reference frame even though there is that magnetic field the, the total force is zero so how do we do that well we made one critical mistake when we changed reference frames the mistake was we changed the velocities we took care of the fact that velocity is relative but we made an intrinsic assumption that the magnetic field remains the same and that is wrong or that must be wrong. That is the wrong assumption that we make, okay? So here is something that we need to try and understand. The magnetic field must also change. It has to change. But wait, that doesn't solve anything. Because notice that when we do this experiment in our lab, we actually find that there's going to be a net force acting on the charged particle and we do find that this particle will eventually go into a circular motion and it would cross that brown reference line. So we know for sure that the net force must be QEB. That is for sure. So, and therefore, even in dude's reference frame, the net force must be QEB. But changing magnetic field is not going to help because even if magnetic field does transform into some different value, maybe its magnitude changes. So let's call that magnetic field as B dash. So we're going to do that now. So it doesn't matter how it transforms. And I don't even know whether it's going to remain, it, it remains into the, into the screen. Maybe it changes its direction as well. But the fact is the charge is at rest and the magnetic force still remains zero. Oh, this tells us one more thing. Maybe not just the magnetic field is frame, in frame dependent quantity, but maybe even electric field must also be the frame dependent quantity. Because if magnetic field can't put a force on a charged particle, then guess who can? Electric fields. That's right. Electric field can put a force on a charged particle. Electric field in our reference frame was zero because you know we did not talk about electric field we assume that electric field is zero 
but that can't be true in dude's reference frame maybe even electric field transforms and changes and maybe this time in dude's reference frame it's the electric field that puts a force on the charged particle and that's exactly what's going to happen so these transformations from one reference frame to another is called as the Lorentz transformations. I'm going to write that down over here. But this tells us something amazing and something to be very careful about. When you're dealing with electric and magnetic fields in any problem, please don't change reference frames. Because if you do, then the electric field and the magnetic fields given in the problem also have to undergo a Lorentz transformation, which is beyond the scope of the syllabus. And so let's not do that. All right, so what's going to happen over here? Well, if we applied Lorentz transformation, if we did, we will see that in dude's reference frame, he will see an additional electric field upwards. That's what he will see. And I'm not going to tell you how that happens. I'm just going to tell you that it does because I'm telling you it's beyond the scope of the syllabus. And if you do apply Lorentz transformation, you will see that the strength of that electric field is going to be v times b it's just going to be that where b was the magnetic field over here and that's right that's what's going to happen it's going to be v times b and therefore this dude now he's going to say well so he's gonna, let's do the additional thinking the magnetic force on that is zero that is true but since he's going to see an electric field and he will then he's going to say oh there's going to be an electric force acting on a charged particle and we know what the electric force acting on a charged particle is and that's just q times e but e is vb and therefore you see that he's going to correctly find that there's going to be a net force acting on the charged particle upwards and that net force i hope you can see that is going to be qvb and now you can see that both reference frames you will find that the net force acting on the charged particle will remain the same. We are going to find out that the new electric and magnetic fields are transformed in such a way that the total force acting on the charged particle will always remain the same as over here. It will always be the same as you find over here and the total force will eventually, if, if, you, if you did the calculation, you will eventually find in that same time this charged particle will go and hit the reference line. And that is the resolution to the problem. And so this tells us something amazing. This tells us that in one reference frame, the force could be due to magnetic field, but in another reference frame, the same charged particle experience this is the same force, but the origin of the force is electric field. If, if we can't decide which is the source, whether it's the electric field or it's the magnetic field and the source changes based on reference frame, this tells us something very, very deep about electric and magnetic fields. This tells us, and please pay attention, that electric and magnetic fields are relative. They must be relative terms. They must be relative quantities. They're, so this tells us that electric fields are not absolute and magnetic fields are not absolute. In one reference frame, an electric field can transform into a magnetic field in another reference frame and vice versa. So if electric fields and magnetic fields are not part of absolute quantities and they're just relative terms, what is the real, what is the underlying reality? The underlying reality, my dear friends, must be a combination of electric and magnetic fields. And we call that today as electromagnetic fields. That is, whatever that is, is the underlying reality of electric and magnetic fields. And due to a limited imagination or maybe limited point of view we don't get to see the entire or get to experience this electromagnetic fields together but we tend to experience them as separate entities like electric fields and magnetic fields but nature doesn't care whether you call it as electric or magnetic what is real is electromagnetic field this is real this is the part of objective reality and so this tells us that the two formulae for the force that we have, the electric force, which is equal to Q into E, is a relative force because electric fields can transform. So this is not a true force. This is a relative force. 
and the magnetic field or the magnetic force that we find which is q times v cross b is also relative force but do you know what is not relative do you know what is absolute if we add the two forces if we add the two forces and calculate the total force we get q times e plus q times v cross b and guess what this let me let me rewrite that and okay. this force is what we call as the electromagnetic force em force and it is absolute so although e and b and v are relative if you take e plus v cross b this combination turns out to be not relative it turns out to be absolute and when i say relative and not relative i'm talking about frame dependence and frame independent so this force r equivalently e plus v cross b is frame independent but e v and b are frame dependent all right now here is a very good question that you can think about we know that the source of electricity is a source of electric fields is a charge is a charge and guess what charge is frame independent okay this is one of the fundamental concepts or properties of charge charge itself is frame independent so wait a second wait a second what i'm saying is in this reference frame electric field is zero therefore the net charge over here in I mean the net out charge besides besides this guy there shouldn't be any net charge anywhere in the universe in our reference frame because the electric field is zero but somehow in the dude's reference frame a net charge must exist because that net charge is creating an electric field but how is that possible <laughs> if you really go down this path you will eventually find that this is all due to the fact that eventually because space and time itself are relative quantities that's right that's the eventuality that's, that's the eventual resolution to this apparent paradox you need to use einstein's theory of relativity to eventually understand how a zero electric field gets transformed into a non-zero electric field how does that happen it's all because of einstein's theory of relativity in fact guess what the einstein's theory of relativity was actually motivated by electromagnetism it was actually motivated by this problem einstein's original thought experiments were with electromagnetism so if you go down this path you will eventually be able to rediscover with enough mathematics you'll be able to rediscover all the laws of of relativity of uh, about how space and time itself are relative and all that stuff so it's amazing to think about it so it's amazing that a simple idea that a magnetic force is this is simple this simple formula that magnetic force this this formula has actually changed the way we thought we think about space and time and the nature of reality so stay tuned for more